The book publisher Puffin is rewriting Roald Dahl's classic children's book so his literature can, quote, continue to be enjoyed by all today. Edits have been made to change descriptions of the characters' physical appearances, including Augustus Gloop being changed to enormous instead of fat, and Mrs. Twit is no longer ugly and beastly, She's just beastly. In his book, The Witches, a paragraph explaining that witches are bald beneath their wigs ends with a new line, there are plenty of other reasons why women might wear wigs, and there is certainly nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Gender neutral terms have been added as well. The Oompa Loompas from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory were described as small men. Now they are small people. And the Cloud Men from James and the Giant Peach are now Cloud People. Puffin and the Roald Dahl Story Company made these changes in conjunction with Inclusive Minds, which its spokesperson describes as a collective for people who are passionate about inclusion and accessibility in children's literature. The co-founder, Alexandra Strick, said they aim to ensure authentic representation by working closely with the book world and with those who have lived experience of any facet of diversity. The Roald Dahl Story Company said regarding the changes that when publishing new print runs of books written years ago, it is not unusual to review the language used alongside updating other details, including a book's cover and page layout. Our guiding principle throughout has been to maintain the storylines, characters, and the irreverent and sharp-edged spirit of the original text. Any changes may have been small and carefully uh, made, sorry, have been small and carefully considered. Some of those changes don't seem very small. Uh, some do, whatever. Uh, you know, tweaks to language over time, okay, but that was adding that was editorializing. That was adding a whole other sentence about Wait. why women can wear wi like. Yeah, actually, the, the one about the twits I think is was problematic to me. I, I got to say, I loved Raw Doll. I grew up with Raw Doll the way that the kids these days feel about Harry Potter. Uh, so this 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 story is hitting home for me. The the twits. The whole point of the story is that he describes these two people who's being ugly on the inside reflects them being ugly on the outside. And he goes on to say that. If you're a good person, even if you like have no chin and pockmarks and all these other features, mm -hmm. you're still beautiful because your spirit beams from the outside. And there's a Quentin Blake illustration, his, the, the, the guy who famously did all the illustrations for the books, that shows like a rotund, not conventionally attractive woman, but she's got she's cur she's got curly hair, she's beaming mm -hmm. and she's happy. And he says she's beautiful because she's a good person inside. So the idea that you feel like you have to take ugly out of the description, it, he quite literally wasn't meaning it like literally ugly. He was speaking to a person's mm. spirit in a kind of Victorian literature sort of way where people's outsides and insides are are written as matching up. Yeah, that, that shows how I, I think not well informed a lot of this. Who are these sensitivity readers who are going to rewrite everything for us and decide what we're allowed to uh, decide what's acceptable. This sounds like an incredibly slippery slope. I mean, make a, make a new story if you want to use language that fits you. Like, write something new. Don't redo the old thing. I, I mean, it's hard because on the other hand, there is this argument that says the people who are involved are part of this Roald doll group who want the book to sell and do well. Yeah. They're profiting off of it. And it is true that you probably wouldn't have a story today where you would write about a nine-year-old being enormously fat or you probably wouldn't write... Uh, one of the descriptions of Matilda is that um, Miss Trunchbull, the evil principal, has a horsey face, or describing kids as eight nutty little idiots. I mean, it is a little. It it's is colorful. A little, like, I mean, we have to sanitize British. the language. Yeah, <laughs> it's British. It's colorful. It's it's. Real, so what do you, what do you make? What, what would you say to someone who says, "Look, the people who have the rights to this book." and want it to sell and want it to do well in a more sensitive market, have every right to offer new editions of this book. Well, they clearly have every right. I don't think there's any serious argument that they don't have the right to do that. I think we have the right as people of good taste to just object <laughs> to this sanitizing, this whitewashing, this, this, this effort to redo old things. Just do something new. Just stop it. Um, and I've seen this get nothing but criticism, by yeah. the way, from, from, from virtually everyone. Fr like Rushdie, everyone every corner. is mad. Yeah. Uh, so, so I don't. Publishers don't think these things through. Maybe there. If, if you're only listening to the opinion of like your sensitivity readers, you're going to come out with some really bad products, some really bad books, or changes to books that most normal people uh, don't don't think okay, is so necessary I, at all. I have another hard follow up for you. Okay. I'm just trying to think through and, and test my reasoning on this. There are some nursery rhymes that ha were changed so long ago that we, many of us don't remember what their original words were. Things like any, mini mighty, mo catch a tiger by its toe, it wasn't originally 
tiger. Mm. It was uh, inward. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of these classic rhymes that in their original iterations would be very offensive to the contemporary ear. Mm -hmm. Should they, those have not been changed? Should we have relegated, you know, ring around the rosy and all of the stuff to the dustbin of history? Are we, do we think there's a, a level of language that merits change because there's just been so much social change and the language is so ugly and um, demeaning of a given group? Or just categorically, should we just reinvent everything new if social mores should? I mean, the, the things, it, it, children recite those, so I don't think it's necessary to have children just like belting out ex the N-word or expletives. But they, I mean, there's, they learn. I yeah. mean, they, these are written up in books and fairy tales and on posters and rhymes. I mean, yeah. there is a written version of all of these things. They're not just being passed down purely by word of mouth. Yeah. So there's a question about, you know, it, I think there is probably a space I think that's a, a, a particularly space in which ugly judgment. slur that it's okay to not use in a uh, something children say over and over again. But you know, I was listening to, um, I just started, I, I'm trying, I was an English major, but you know, you, you miss, you have gaps, you, things you should, or maybe you were supposed to read in college mm -hmm. and you didn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to make up for some of those. So I just started listening to, I, I, I'm listening to it on audiobooks while I drive and go to the gym. And I was just started, I downloaded um, the, the Sound and the Fury by, mm -hmm. by Faulkner. And I'm listening to it on audio tape. And so very early on, yep, yeah, there's the reader says the N-word mm -hmm. because that's what the characters say because mm -hmm. they're a southern, uh, formerly mm -hmm. aristocratic family that is collapsing um, with the changing of the times, et cetera. And uh, it's, it's ugly to hear it, but it's very, I, I don't think you would want to ch change this no. very important, pivotal work of literature. No, certainly not. But yeah. does it, is it different when it's the kids? Because so many of these arguments have been about, yeah. oh, but it's the children. And including, we, we have to say, so many books and that have been now censored under the Woke Act in Florida mm -hmm. as a consequence of violating those policies, not because they are inappropriate for children in terms of um, being harsh or rude or uh, hurtful language, but because they mm -hmm. teach global warming as a scientific fact. Or, you know, because there is um, some aspect of kind of a teaching the structural racism Look, as I a don't want to burn the books. Like I don't want to take the books off the shelves. I don't want to change the books. Just let the books be the way they are. So that Augustus also means Gloop's feelings notwithstanding. <laughs> um, but, 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 you know, you're right to point out that, yeah, that it's a... It's a theme of Roald Dahl's work that like the, the goodness can overcome the out. Now he also does describe those characters in very you know, negative terms because they're nasty, yeah. nasty but little witches, whippersnappers. The, the bald witches are, are bad because they're like turning children into mice. And eating them. It, correct. Or do they eat them when, they, no they don't like mice. Oh no, they're I no, no, no. They, been a while. they don't like mice. <laughs> they get turned into mice, or they're trying to turn them into mice. The, the, the protagonist and his grandmother are trying to turn the witches. Well, maybe what we should both do is go home and stream the new version of Witches, which I never uh -huh. saw because, remember, there was that controversy then, too, because um, the Anne Hathaway remake uh, featured her having some kind of hand prosthetic that people who have a particular kind of disability said was... Um, mocking their physical disability, and Anne Hathaway ended up apologizing for that kind of prosthetic costume and make makeup choice. So I never caught that one, but maybe it's time for me the, to refresh. I think the original one with Angelica Houston. Is no, I saw the original. Yeah, because like I said, I'm a big yeah. Raul Dahl head. I love Raul Dahl. I, mean, I love I, the original uh, Willy Wonka movie. Course. The redone one is terrible. The Johnny I Depp. thought was not. Not good. Not, not a Johnny Depp fan. I, know, I, I do like Johnny Depp. I found him off-putting in that role. Um, uh, I, I like him in a lot of things. I don't like him as much as in others. That one, that one was a misfire for me. But the original movie I, is so weird and delightful and just, yeah, I it's, loved it. It's, it's phenomenal. It. Raw Dahl, in his adult books, I mean, I, as a kid, I ran through every single book yeah. in the library shelves and moved on to his uh, more adult and young adult literature. The story of Henry Sugar and Six More, all of that. Just wonderful, wonderful stuff to read. Why didn't Grandpa Joe get out of bed and uh, and start earning a living for his his <laughs> poor family? Okay. Until, oh, now there's a golden ticket. Oh, oh, I'm feeling better. I can get out of bed. Robbie's revisionist takes on Grandpa Joe notwithstanding. I'm glad to see there's so much pushback <laughs> on this particular revision of literature. And we will have more rising for you after this.